Welcome everybody to the second game of the series. It is Execration going up against Red Vipers in this two game series of the Joint of the League season number five's Asian Division 2 group stage. Execration do have a one game lead. It was kind of an action backed game with some throwing involved by both teams in particular fights but in the end Execration they just pulled so far ahead taking like four five team fights in a row with only losing a support maybe two supports at the worst but their course managed to stay alive in clutch situations and Execration they just played a little bit better in game number one but RV they definitely didn't get pushed over too hard at least up until that one point where just everything got turned around somehow but here we are game number two a completely new game new drafts to come as well of course maybe they're gonna go for like somewhat similar drafts but I'd expect them to not go for something too crazy, too out of the ordinary, to be honest. As everybody has loaded in, but oh, we're we're still paused. I was like, what? Why isn't the draft starting? Oh, solo casting while having just been sick sucks for their throat. By the way, guys, just saying that. But I'm gonna power through. Hopefully there's just not gonna be too lo many pauses or anything because my throat might not be able to take that. Looking at the bands though, so far, one on one with the bands in game number one. Chuggernaut removed by Execration, Axe taken out by Red Vipers, although both. I guess Axe didn't get nerfed as much. Although Culling Blade nerf was somewhat significant. A Phoenix though banned out of all heroes. Execration... Does that mean a brood mother is incoming for them, for example? Or are they really just that afraid of a phoenix in general? We will see soon enough which one it is. But Red Vipers now. They do take out a Medusa straight out. So Execration, first pick, Troll Warlord, Vengeful Spirit. To be honest, always gonna be a good first pick. Or Brewmaster even in the pool if they want to go for that one, for example. What other heroes could they go for? Every now and then some teams still favor a Tidehunter for example. Or a Lion first pick I guess wouldn't be too horrible either. But whoa whoa whoa! Do they really favor that hero as highly? I guess so. Phantom Lancer first pick coming out from Execration. Red Vipers. How will they try to deal with Phantom Lancer this game? Do they go for some more initiation? Although then again Batrider might be pretty hard to... Get the real Phantom Lancer with that the lasso. Oh man. Th this definitely isn't gonna be easy for them. By, li by like no means is it gonna be easy. But people thought that Phantom Lancer, once it uh, is introduced to that uh, captain's mode, that it's gonna be picked up a hell of a lot early on and then it's gonna phase out just like Legion Commander did. I seriously hope that Phantom Lancer won't be as popular as he used to be. Although he's a completely different hero with his skill set, I'd say he can still be just as annoying, maybe even a little bit more so. I think the Phantom Lancer of old was maybe a little bit easier to kill even, just because this doppelganger is just a pain in the ass to deal Earth with. Shaker. He used to be able to go invis, but you just get a gem, just see the real target when he's in, in invis and get a kill, just easy. But the Earth Shaker will be the first pick. A nice hero to help against illusions, of course. Secondary one, though. Are we gonna see Vengeful? If they go for Batrider, Execration will go for Vengeful anyway. So I guess Batrider is maybe not out of, out of the question entirely, but maybe just a little bit useless. Tide Hunter, possibly Anchor Smash, although up against the Fusal Heroes, is gonna run out of mana. Ravage is nice, though. Clockwork, I don't think is the hero you want to go for. Centaur could do. Not too reliant on mana there, also double edge, decent. Blink, hoof stomp. Maybe you can actually get the real Phantom Lancer. But Red Vipers, one minute and counting down for the reserve time. So what might we see from them? It's really hard, man. I. I since 
Phantom Lancer hasn't been in the pool for all that long for competitive Dota, so it just means that I can't really say what even works up against it. Minerva Flicker is nice up against like any illusion or unit based hero. Other than that, looks like Great Vipers themselves are kind of trying to figure things out. Go for Chaos Knight, Illusions versus Illusions. Don't think that's gonna work out though. Naga Siren trying to split push against Phantom Lancer, maybe. Red Vipers though, after some pretty long consideration, picking themselves up by Witch Doctor. As execration, Dazzle will be the pick for them now. I was. Well, 95% expecting Avenger Spirit to be honest for Execration because, first of all, they've played that hero so much, but that's not a bad hero to have in general. Especially if Phantom Lancer has lots of illusions just surrounding somebody, you can go for a massive Shadow Wave bomb. So it has some pretty nice synergy between it, to be honest. So, can, can just work out perfectly if played correctly. Now a sniper with a Naga Siren removed by Execration, so that's the second time to ban out a sniper. I'm not too sure how good sniper is up against Phantom Lancer, but it might be pretty decent. Lots of damage with the Assassinates, Shrapnels to slow him down, Headshots of course as well to try to kite him, if you can find the correct one this. is. Shadow Fiend is now banned by Red Vipers as last game. It was completely ignored I think, this game... They do think that the Sniper ban might be exactly the setup for the Shadowfin pick. But not gonna be the case as Red Vipers make sure Execration will not get their hands on that one. So Red Vipers having two supports, it's time to start going for some cores. I still think Brewmaster might not be too bad of an option here. Maybe Red Vipers pick to differ but... Clockwork. Clockwork will be the pick in the end. If we can get the correct Phantom Lancer, all well and good but... It's going to be rather hard to do that. Also the illusions, they're going to probably block just lots of hookshot angles as well. And I'm not too sure, but if Phantom Lancer uses the doppelganger, he's, I think, even going to get out of the cogs, or at least he has the possibility to get out of, out of the cogs using doppelganger, probably, so... I'm not too sure how well this clockwork will fare up against that, but Excretion now picking up a Bristleback themselves. So running a possible Dazzle Bristleback offlane as Red Viper did themselves last game. It might be it. Maybe they're even going to go for like a full on aggressive try leaving Phantom Lancer solo which I don't think is going to happen. They might run of course a full Bristleback solo offlane as well. Red Viper though. Going for an aggressive route here. Picking up a Queen of Pain. And if she goes for an Aghanim Scepter. It's going to be excellent up against Phantom Lancer just blowing up. Phantom Lancer himself plus of course the illusions. Only 40 second cooldown. Execration now themselves. They also need a mid laner possibly here. A puck wouldn't be too bad. Can escape clockwork with just illusory or phase shift. And then chaunt out. Pretty decent against Queen of Pain as well getting a silence and puck will indeed be the pick for them. Can't say it was all that surprising just because of there aren't that many popular mid lane heroes that could just deal with Queen of Pain like that. Puck definitely a great one though. Especially since other than the Puck now, they don't have anything to deal with, really with the Queen of Pain blinking out. Lion also banned by Red Viper, so that's gonna be another hero that cannot provide this extra assistance with Lockdown. So what support heroes, or popular support at least, are even left? Age Depression. Might not be the greatest one for Execration. Dream Coil is decent-ish setup for it, for the Ice Blast, but... Huh, for Lockdown, Shadow Shaman, possibly. Crystal Maiden, I don't think it's gonna be it. Although Crystal Maiden providing the mana to the Bristleback, as well as the Phantom Lancer isn't all that bad, in all fairness. It's just... How much to Execration, or... How highly would they value... The extra mana region from the Arcane Aura. Red Viper though, last pick about to come. With the reserve time combined. They have about 30 seconds left to just make their decision here. Some kind of safe lane carry. All of the hard carries. Medusa has already been taken out. 
Spectre could be one of those if you want to go that route, but Spectre is extremely slow in just joining fights and, well, doing much in the fights at the very least. If you go for the aggressive build, which means maxing out Desolate, it can work out, but we're gonna have a tiny. So a tiny without an IO, I have to say I haven't seen that for quite a while. I think the last I saw it was like Fnatic before TI4. Running just tiny, tossing Pudge around for example, something like that. Or Tiny's just tossing around Centaurs. But even then, there might have been an IO backing him up. I'm not entirely sure about this to be honest. So this Tiny is going to have... It, it's nice with the Cleo, of course. Craggy exterior is also nice against Phantom Lancer, I guess. So it's not that bad of a pick, in all fairness. But Execration, go for Revengeful and... I can't believe I forgot that Revengeful is still in the pool. I was so positive that Revengeful was, like, banned out or something. Because it wasn't picked earlier on. Huh. Well, we'll see how it's gonna work out with the Tiny. Like I said, it's decent-ish against Phantom Lancer with the Craggy Exterior, with the Agony Scepter Cleave. Might be even seeing like an early blink, tiny, just Avalanche Toss, keep on killing Execration over and over and over. Then again, if they don't get the Dazzle, there might be Shallow Grave and they're just... I don't know, doing anything. But, to introduce the lineups to you guys, for the second game of this series, Execration vs Red Vipers, Yaj, JJ, playing the Bristleback, heading towards the offlane, Leaving Jules on the puck for the mid lane as Primo playing the Dazzle, leaving Bicicleta on the Vengeful Spirit to stand in and the last one for them is going to be Chemo. They already know where Hulk is, who's playing the Cloaker of course. Hulk taking some heavy harassment, some body blocking, not going to quite come out. Hulk, he might even go down here, Spirit Lands, two seconds, more attacks to come. There's the Spirit Lands, I think Hulk will just survive with those power cogs. Bicicleta's damage not quite enough after Chemo, he's also completely drained of mana now. But Hulk, nice survival there. In the meantime, Seven playing the Witch Doctor, leaving Godlike Sexy on the UF Shaker. Danger alert to handle the Queen of Pain and those runes probably going the way of Execration here on both sides. Danger alert, too low on health already. Sticking Apom, stacking up on Seven as well as Godlike Sexy. There's the Avalanche though. Bristleback gets hit in the face. Only has the goo for now. They know there's no Quill Spray to be afraid of. But with the Illusion up, they're going to get Seven anyway. I think, yes, they are indeed. First Blood once again. Going the way of Execration, Yaj, JJ, they want to pick it up as well. Having the Goo early on means that you don't have that much lane presence. As far as like, getting kills on the enemies go, but they got the first plot from it. Getting some nice gold of course as well, so... Whoop. Nice start for sure. But Bounty Rune, one went to Jules, yes, and one went to the Phantom Lancer. So Jules, gonna get a faster bottle, although both start with the Null Talisman, but look at Danger Alert. I'm not too sure if she would have been able to go all the way back home, maybe with Blink. But did go for the Shadow Strike early, so just rather low on health. Jules, I guess he isn't all that high himself, but does have a slight XP advantage thanks to that Bounty Rune. But Kimo on the bottom lane now, out of mana, which means it's a little bit harder to go up with Slocker. Oh, top lane completely missed it, but Bristleback. Be not being level 2 just means Starvey, they can easily go for the aggression, don't have to be worried about just massive quill spray spam or anything. Dazzle, he's gonna have to stay pretty far back, of course I guess he wants to like harass the tiny if he can, just to make sure tiny isn't free farming or anything. Mid lane though, danger alert, up to 4 lasted so not doing that bad but he is at a critical health at the moment. And Jules probably will get that bottle before him, bottom lane Hulk. He should be beefy enough to survive this lane up until Phantom Lancer gets a few more points into Spirit Lands. Or just gets a little bit more mana going for himself. Cogs! Oh! Don't push out the Vengeful Spirit. Vengeful Spirit! I was so certain he's close enough for the pushback, but not the case. As Hulk will snatch the rune here. Maybe Haste? Nope, just the Bounty rune. Oh, Jules though! Got the kill on Queen of Pain now! One more punch from Godlike Sexy. Starting with Boots on the Earth Shaker chest allowed him to get the kill right here. Queen of Pain still died though, but nice XP, nice gold, plus a double damage rune to be picked up from the Earth Shaker now as well. And guys in chat, do not just spam random crap guys, do not be racist. 
Do, do not make me look at chat. Otherwise, I'm gonna miss kills if I have to look at chat as well. So, if you want to see kills, do not be racist. Or do not be retarded on chat in general. Yes. Mid lane though, Puck still holding an advantage, 13 last hits compared to the 7. Top lane, Bristleback still a little bit low on mana, only has just enough for 3 quill sprays, that's it. So it's he's not that threatening being this low on mana. Chemo, the same story for him, does have Ring of Passy which is gonna help out a little bit, but... Clockwork, knowing there's no Spirit Lances to come. He's gonna get a lot from the offlane I think. Oh no, closer though, he might be in some trouble. JJ, he already used the Goo, so means no quill sprays as I already talked about and with the paralyzing cast bouncing out around a couple of times both of them both of them will be making their escapes as puck in the meantime also died in the mid lane so this earth shaker god like sexy he's been a part of all three kills and without him they wouldn't have a single one it's really well played thus far from the earth shaker But he's already up to almost 1k gold, so if he wants to, he can even go for like really early arcane boots. It's a little bit more popular to go for like soul ring tranquils, but if you can get them this early on, arcane boots would be excellent to be honest, I think. Just for the entire team. It means which doctor can use that wood restoration for longer. Tiny can go for more avalanche toss combinations. And Jules, although has tied twice, still leading in last hits up against Queen of Pain. So as long as there's no assistance coming in the way of Queen of Pain Jules looks to be having just a better time in the mid lane. Nice Illusioner will land on Danger Alert as well, but Shadow Strike will get dodged with an easy phase shift out. As Jules just keeps on putting on the harass with just dry clicks, spells, everything. Bottom lane Hulk will survive once again chemo, too low on mana to keep on going. Maybe if he had the charge of cooldown, Phantom Rush, he could have gone for it as well. Seven though. Oh god, look at the shadow wave damage! It's only a level 1 shadow wave as well. So many creeps surrounding the hero and we had a witch doctor buyback. That must have been a misclick guys, right? Oh man. Probably wanted to like get the TP, I don't know, but bought back instead. And now closer, a nice fissure does come out Primo, drops low but gets rid of the tower aggro so it's gonna be fine. But they do save Tiny for now, so Godlike Sexy once again at the right time in the right position. As, whoa, closer. Still pretty low but has a healing cell, so he's going to get back to a healthy enough margin as J, Yaj. Or JJ I should say, not a single J, just double J. He has his bot low, another Fisher comes out, Avalanche will clip them as well, toss! Onto the wrong target, Primo will survive, but the Paralyzing Cask, it's gonna keep on bouncing, oh my god! Shallow Grave, Clutch 1 does come out, and now JJ is in some trouble, Enchant Totem does not connect, so it's gonna be the escape for both of those heroes. However, barely, Fisher couldn't quite connect there. Funny enough, Bristleback, not even backing all the way home, wants to get the 6 minute rune, but not gonna be able to contest it up against the Queen of Pain. Who gets a double damage rune, so a little bit scary even. But 4 to 3, once again, looks to be kind of an action packed game. Looking at the last hit numbers though Phantom Lancer safe lane, 33 and 9 denies as well. Compare that to the other safe laner, 23 and 2. The Tiny has the same amount. Oh, mid lane again, Jules, he's gonna get stunned up. We're gonna have a Sonic Wave. Nope, phase shift here. There's the Sonic Wave. It doesn't hit. What? How? I thought Puck is gonna die. Magic stick, he survives. God like sexy. Is he gonna go down as well? One attack from the Puck, 10 HP. That's all you need on Jules. Man, what a play, what a play from Jules there, face shifting, dodging, although that sonic wave, I was so certain it's gonna hit the puck, but puck somehow makes it out from there, gets a double as well, top lane now, 7, slowed down by so much, the toss is there, trying to save Witch Doctor, throwing him a little bit further up, but it's not enough, magic stick plus border charges, one more quill spray to do the trick, 8 to 4, now execration, they're pulling so far ahead, Bristleback having the same amount of lances, but then again, they're gonna lose one. Maybe Primo as well. They have the Shallow Grave, never mind. They might not even, might not even lose the hero. Bottling up on Bristleback. There's the Shallow Grave. Illusion Roar will connect with the Waning Rift. Jules comes in at the right time. Triple kill for the Bristleback. Queen of Pain. Oh no, Bristleback died. He TP'd in the base and died from a Shadow Strike. 
that timing was extremely unfortunate. Maybe they didn't start bottling up immediately, maybe it was just unlucky. But Hulk in the meantime, Dream Coil wasn't used. Just got stunned up, but with the last attack, Jules gets the kill, has the phase shift as well. Waiting for the avalanche, not even gonna have to use it. Bicicletta though, in some trouble. Toss, enchant totem, one smack, does go down. But now got like sexy, a few more punches from Jules. One more, he's gonna get it as well. Had vision, couldn't just get juked around. And Jules has the dream coil. They're gonna go for closer, dream coil is there, illusion herb coming off cooldown in one second time. Closer, no chance, waning Rift to make sure there's no avalanche, no toss. Jules, triple kill for him. He has power threads and he's gonna get the blink in 200 gold, well less than 200 even. What? Jules! Stop carrying as a stand-in, stop carrying your team. Wow, just impressive play so far. He's level 10 as well. That's gonna be like power threads and blink, like 9, 9 and a half minutes in. That's absolutely crazy, although Jules- OH THE DODGE! The chaunt out, he's out of mana now so they can't go for too much in return but... Man, that, that's just some orgasmic place. That's a blink dagger finished. That is impressive, guys. Bottom lane, though, Kimo has himself an invis drone, so he's gonna be fine up against Seven and Hulk both. Hulk does have a hook shot, so though, as well as with a bottle, has a little bit more sustain on the lane here. But can they even kill? Oh, Sonic Wave was used. Vengeful Spirit dropping low. But he's gonna be fine unless Queen of Pain blinks back in. Wave of Terror. That's about it. So Sonic Wave was used. Doesn't even get the kill with that one. This Queen of Pain must be on tilt now. 1, 4 and 3 the kill score for Queen of Pain. Not the greatest as There's the charge from Kimo with the invis. It doesn't even break invisible. That was funny. Oh, a stun comes out. But there's no Sonic Wave to blow up Primo anymore. Of course, has the Shallow Grave anyway. And... Just as I look into the mid lane, Jules comes in with the Dream Coil. They snatch a kill onto Hulk's uh, Clockwork. Looking at the net worth just... Wow, wow, wow. There I look at the graphs as closer. Might even be in trouble as well. A TP is coming in. Nice positioning as well from the Queen of Pain. As close to Yaj as he can. Now Puck. He gets another kill. Why do they get kills when I'm looking at other lanes? Go getting some action. Puddling up between Shadow Strike ticks. Toss as well. Oh, he might even die from Shadow Strike. No, not with the bottle. As Puck activates a haste. No, no, it's not the Puck. It's the Earthshaker activating the haste rune and Puck getting a bounty rune. He can still kill off that guy. Oh, the Kuri, no! Do not kill the Kuri! Oh, God! Well, that was horrible. That was that uh, Vanguard being finished from the Phantom Lancer, but Micro was piss poor. They will get the tower, I think, though. Hulk, can he deny the tower? No, he cannot. Kimo though, just standing there, not running into Cox, just standing in the Cox, it's fine. So the graphs already a 7000 net worth lead. XP 7.5 almost as well. Bottom lane though, Hulk in trouble again! Paralysis cast will come out, but the doppelganger was used. Even the hookshot came out, but with that phantom rush, Hulk goes down. Kimo, too low on mana, I think, to keep on going. If he had a Vanguard finished on his person, maybe so. But there is also a Vanguard finish now on the Bristleback. So they're gonna have two pretty damn just hard heroes to bring down. On top of that, they're gonna have a Dazzle backing both of them up as well. Now, wow, Jules, he goes in again, gets one kill. He's gonna get a secondary one. Dream Coil broken by Queen of Pain, of course. Had you not broken it, would have been going down to the right click of Puck anyway. But Jules up to 10, 2 and 3. There's a toss in the meantime with the avalanche to follow. But there's a shadow wave to follow up. Fisher, it misses Bristleback somehow. A few more quill sprays, that's all they need. One more, I think. One more, yes. They get the kill. Echo Slam was used in the meantime now. JJ just bottling up. He's up against two though. Can he get one kill? I think he can get one, but not more. Is he gonna be able to run out? Oh, he is faster with the Warpath stacks than Hulk. Hulk does not have the hookshot for another 15 seconds. And one goo will be enough of a slow to make Bristleback back off. They're just balling out of control completely. And now, with Bicicletta coming in, Wave Turtle does completely miss though. Now, JJ, is he gonna be able to man fight this? No, he's not! Hulk, he's gonna even survive. Even gonna snatch up a double damage rune. Come on, turn around. Be a man, do the right thing. Go kill Venture Spirit. Not gonna happen. Kimo comes in. So, in the end, they will get a couple of kills. We have a Sonic Wave though, catches both. Kimo still doesn't have the Vanguard, but. They gone, Jules! God like on the puck. Oh, wow. Migoto this. Migoto this. Impressive. 21 to 9 the kill score. We're only 12 minutes in, guys. 12 minutes in. 
Puck, 8.3k net worth. He, well, not quite tripling the highest on RV, which is the clockwork. Funny enough, but... Man, 7. Oh, you are so screwed. If a magic missile lands, no, went for the wave of the reverse. There's the long range magic missile, but it's just enough to get a kill. Of course, Wave of Terror boosts up even the small damage of a Poison Touch level 1. But there's gonna be a Crimson Guard on uh, JJ's Bristleback. I mean, Kimo's still waiting for the Cooter to respawn to get his own Vanguard going, but... Looks like for now, may, may not even need it. So, what, what's the comeback mechanic for RV now? The Tiny doesn't have an IO to back him up. Going for drums first. So, he's not gonna have an Agony Center for quite some time. Even if he gets that... Might be somewhat hard to just keep on target. Blink, silence, Dagon, Dream Coil, kill. Kill, kill, money, 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 XP, XP, good game. Well, are they really calling it? GG, well played is called, oh god. So, 40 minutes in, Jules just forces RV to tap out. He does die, he did die now. To the Avalanche Toss combination, 800 gold gain, but wow. So, what can I say guys? Execration, game number one, weren't the cleanest. Game number two though, Jules came out all guns blazing in a 13 and a half minute game. 678 gold per minute is almost unheard of. That's just too damn massive puck. Jules, as a stand-in, just holding the Pinoy pride flag high, winning it for Execration pretty much. All in all, Execration in great lanes, worked out anyway, Bristleback's lane main 8, 2 and 1, just massive. Phantom Lancer 3, 0 and 5, they just didn't have an answer, and with this guys, it's gonna conclude the broadcast for the time being. Thank you so much for tuning in, I do hope you enjoyed the games, as well as the casting, and if you did, check out Hefla TV for more, it is Hefla TV on both Facebook and Twitter, and for myself per personally, it is at Coucher, I also plan on streaming some gameplay, probably Heroes of the Storm, because that game is freaking awesome to me, to be honest. Maybe some Hearthstone, maybe some Dota every now and then when I have just some Estonian friends to play with. But yes, check out me at AdCoucher, check out Hefla TV for sure because I'm casting here all the time. And just have a good one guys.